I'm going to turn things a little bit around and switch to slightly different topic, uh, a little bit of real estate. Now, having watched your, your channel, I know that uh, you're living in Toronto, and I believe you are also pursuing a Smith maneuver, uh, which I was super excited when I heard about that because my wife and I, we started our Smith maneuver uh, kind of uh, technique uh, fairly recently back in December. We kind of changed our mortgage, switched it to uh, a readvanceable mortgage, and we are still fairly new to the process, but it's still exciting. And we, we have that longer term vision as well, like, because mm -hmm. over time, I think as your patient, that can uh, hopefully uh, pay off. Probably not hopefully. It will pay off. <laughs> it will. Uh, it will pay off. Uh, so I'm going to uh, ask you this question. Tell us maybe a little bit about that Smith Maneuver uh, uh, kind of um, portfolio account that you have. Um, maybe how did you hear about it first? Because I, I know it's fairly, as much as we see people kind of going after it more and more, I think it was probably, it is still a little bit not as well known. And I believe you've started it a while ago. So maybe tell us a little bit about that. How did you hear about that? And how was that journey coming along for you? Mm -hmm. Well, Jam heard about it. He showed up with a book one day. <laughs> said, "Look what I found! This is such a great idea." Um, yeah, I'm not sure where you came across it. Probably one of his many readings on the internet, or mm -hmm. it goes back to when I was kind of doing my initial research in Canada. I already heard the talk initially, but I didn't even have a home or anything. All that I could do is read, and okay, I put this on the site and. Mm -hmm. Until we, we, of course, we got married and everything. And that's when we thought, oh, maybe this is an opportunity that we have now to bring. And then I presented the book to Christine. Yeah, it was, a, it was a pretty interesting read. And it's hard to get your mind around, right? Because I think I grew up with the notion, really, that you pay your house off, right? Like, I always assumed that by the time I retired, I'd be mortgage free. And then I have, you know, I wouldn't have to worry about mortgage payments or anything like that. So it was a different concept to kind of think about where we would just maintain a significant debt on our principal residence and that that debt would then be paying us enough to live and cover the house. And um, so it took a little bit for me, actually, to wrap my head around it. And then, yeah, we decided when the markets were crashing around the world that this was a great time to pull the equity from our home and throw it at the stock market. <laughs> um, it turned out it was a little scary at first when everything continued to go down, <laughs> but uh, it's worked out all right for us. So we've been doing it since uh, April, May of 2020. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Is, is that now considered a large portion of your overall um, like assets in terms of asset I, classes that you invest in? It, of our, yeah, of our stock portfolio, I would say it's about, it's probably about half. Yeah. That's yeah. True. It's about half of it. Would and you the RSPs and everything or oh, the rest of it? Yeah, I, I, I love speaking of that. I love how in your video, I believe you make almost these month every month you make a video around what dividend income you've had and you have that pie chart where you talk about, uh, yeah. you know, the dividend income came from there. I don't recall whether I saw it in one of your videos or maybe uh, elsewhere, but I think you also uh, sometimes as well have talked about like what portion of your uh, investments are from your RSPs or what about, uh, what about the rest of it. So I always appreciate that candid and transparency yeah. because it mm -hmm. helps um, things uh, to put into perspective. And at the same time, I think you also uh, talk about your humble beginnings. It's not always, it was like this. It, it took a while um, yeah. and uh, it's not intended for anybody to fail, think, for example, oh no, it's not going to happen for me. But rather they have to use that almost as a motivation. Like, you know, if I pursue similar type of principles, I could be there. Mm -hmm. That could be me. Um, yeah. I, I find it very inspiring. So thanks for sharing that with our audience. Thank you. Would you uh, recommend Smith Maneuver based on uh, your experience to other Canadians who have a uh, principal residence? And um, what considerations would you say from your perspective they need to have in mind before making that decision for themselves? I would. I think it's a, a very powerful tool, but it has to be done by somebody who's okay with mm -hmm. the risk involved in it, really. Mm -hmm. um, because it's not without its risk, right? You're, you're investing into a stock market that as much as we think is in, you know, nice, safe blue chip stocks, you, you can't ever foresee what the future is ultimately going to hold for us. Right. Yeah. So if you're a type of person that's comfortable watching the markets go up and down and the value of your portfolio go up and down, um, I think then it's definitely something to consider. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. 
But I gotta do your homework, right? So then that's basically what we did. We didn't show up with the book. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't show up with the book to present on the next day. Okay, let's oh, no. start, let's do it. So it took us a while to understand and talk to you know to people, research uh, and do our research and making sure if this is something that we wanted to do. And we are happy with what we did, but at the same time, it was the perfect time, if I can say, because the market that that you know it was like. So the stock market was really down and now we can see the results, right? Mm -hmm. For somebody who is going to start now where the market's a little bit higher, they might not see the same results that we do. But having said that, you have to understand how the tax system works in Canada. So that's one of the advantages that we have. And as Christine mentioned, you know where you are investing, right? You are not mm -hmm. putting this money away on like on you know, wheat stocks or anything that fluctuates quite a lot. You have to understand what are the risks involved. And not only that, if you can sleep at night knowing that the market is down. At the end of the day, it's your main, you know, residence is your main home. So you need to think about the impact. And if your partner is also, you know, on board with you, because mm -hmm. it's, if it's not, it does bring a lot of yeah. stress and it might not be worth it. So Yeah, your timing, I think, couldn't be any better. And again, <laughs> sometimes it just yeah. happens. Uh, mm -hmm. um, I think for us, <laughs> Christine, just reflecting on our experience, because we started in December. And mm -hmm. since then, the, the stock market took, almost took a different type of turn that we would have hoped for. So definitely yeah. we are in the red. Um, but again, we, we are looking at it more of a longer term. And mm -hmm. our, the approach that we are taking, we are not necessarily picking uh, stocks, we are mainly investing only in uh, again, exchange traded fund that is gross mm -hmm. um, yeah. prospect, VQT. I've made some videos on that in the past. Yeah. Um, and the thought process that we had at the time, and I'm, I'm uh, curious to hear your perspective on this as well, was based on my research, uh, one of the considerations that I think has, was brought up was around uh, the implication of uh, tax bleeding from a lens of dividend. So one of the readings was that I had, how the... the dividend stocks, for example, are treated. Although for Canadian uh, yes. companies, and it seems that Canadian stocks, they are better treated for, compared to, let's say, foreign uh, companies, let's say, let's say in a non-tax um, registered accounts. Uh, his uh, notion there was that when it comes to uh, tax taxation, uh, because when you receive dividends almost right, right away, you're going to be taxed on it. Uh, maybe it might be in that notion less favorable as opposed to, say, um, you are investing in something that maybe pays you less dividend, but over time, only when you decide that you want to uh, take out, uh, you, let's say, make some sales and have the capital gain at the time you're mm -hmm. only. So you're almost like delaying your taxation up until the time that you're actually trying to sell some of your positions to have the capital gain. That was one of the considerations for us. We went into almost like something that has more of a gross potential as opposed to less of a, like a dividend mm -hmm. or distributions income. Mm -hmm. Did you have such a uh, consideration at all uh, when you were considering what stocks or ETFs you're going to be investing in? Um, we definitely had conversations with our accountant about it. And I think our rationale was we really wanted the dividend stocks. We wanted to start building that um, income base as early as possible um, because that's honestly, that's a main part of how we're going to be able to achieve fire in 2024. So the sooner we can start buying all of these great stocks, the better our dollar cost average is over the long term. And to be honest, it's done us well. Mm -hmm. We recycle those dividends back onto the, the mortgage. We're constantly reinvesting them back in. And we've seen some pretty good capital appreciation on mm -hmm. the stocks themselves in addition to the dividend income. Something that even with the market, like even with the appreciation of the house in the Toronto market has added a significant amount of value to the house itself because mm -hmm. of the, the stocks that we've invested the equity in, which I think mm -hmm. a lot of people don't realize. They see it as a debt that you're paying interest on, but they don't actually turn around and see that the benefits on the other side of it all the time. And I mean, Gian, I think you were mentioning those understanding the tax implications and knowing about that. And at the end of the year, mm -hmm. knowing what you're getting in, yourself into and what are some of the pros and cons of it is super important. We haven't mm -hmm. uh, ourselves got to that point yet necessarily mm -hmm. to finish the one full year of having the tax implication, and hopefully getting the tax refund. But I think once mm -hmm. that first year hopefully is over, that's going to mm -hmm. make things a lot more 
interesting. Yeah, this yeah. year was the first year we really saw the true benefit of it, and it's 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 pretty good. So that's one of the advantages that we have, and as Christine mentioned, the fact that uh, we don't, uh, as Christine mentioned, the fact that I lost my mind now. So. <laughs> You're always losing your mind. Oh, yeah, that's a blooper coming. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking, ooh, that blooper is right there. <laughs>